Hi everybody, we want to talk a little bit about the divine name. I created this video to go with the blog post uh, about Yehovah and the kind of odd sort of excitement that uh, this particular Twitter post um, that sort of prompted me to do this uh, exhibited, you know, when it comes to the divine name. Again, I'm not quite sure why that's an exciting thing, but if you read the post, you can get my speculation on that. I wanted to spend just a few minutes explaining why the divine name was not pointed, was not vocalized by scribes as Yehovah. That is not what we are supposed to pronounce uh, when it comes to the divine name. The scribes didn't do that vocalization to pronounce the divine name a particular way. Well, I'll get back to that point in a moment. What I have here is I have Bratzman's brief introduction to Old Testament textual criticism. And he's talking in this section about the Kithiv Kare. Now, these are two terms that, you know, describe certain scribal habits, scribal techniques. Kithiv means what is written. Kare means what is to be read. So you have a number, there are a lot of these in the Hebrew Bible, where a scribe would come across a particular word, and he would, in the margin, take that word, the consonants of that word, and put in a different set of vowels than what the manuscript he was copying had. Or, you know, just you know, put in vowels of, of his own choosing. Now, the, this wasn't arbitrary. What the system meant, they would put a little notation in there, and these have become known as the Kathiv Kareh, is that the, the scribe was saying, here's what's in the text, here's what's written, but here's how this word should be read, vocalized. And again, there are a lot of these. Now, one in particular, as Bratzman is talking about, you come to this footnote number seven, and he says, the result of this, you know, taking consonants of a word and then putting in different vowels, really, it creates a hybrid form, a hybrid word. The consonants of the text represent the kithim, again, what's written, the vowels represent the kire. That, you know, it's actually in a sort it's a theoretical form or an impossible form, but the scribe is just trying to make some sort of comment or correction here. And he has here such a hybrid spelling is behind the divine name, anglicized as Jehovah, and made up of the consonants. There your consonants are Y H W H, Yod He Vav He, and the vowels from Adonai. So, again, this is something everybody who does Hebrew Bible study knows, that <clears throat> the divine name was actually one of these Kathiv Kare. Here's what's, what's written. And then they would, the scribe would take the consonants, and he would put in these particular vowels to the consonants of the divine name. Now, what I'm suggesting is the intent of that was not to have us pronounce Yehovah or an ancient Jew wouldn't hit this word in the text and say Yehovah. What an ancient Jew would do is when they hit this text, they would know that the vowels came from Adonai and they would say Adonai. Adonai was the substitute for the divine name. Now, let's come over here and I want to try to illustrate this in a different way. Here you have the divine name, again, Y-H-W-H, Reading right to left, yod hey vav hey, and here are the consonants from, or excuse me, the vowels of Adonai. So you you have four consonants here, not vocalized, and you've got this word here, Adonai. And what the scribes would do is they would take this vowel right here, and this vowel, and this vowel, and the result of that would be Yehovah. Okay, here, here's I'll just type it out. Here's what it would look like. Let me switch my keyboard here. This is what you would get. Now you say, well, Mike, that doesn't make a lot of sense because this vowel right here, two dots, vertical dots, doesn't look like this one. Here we have two vertical dots and then this little slash next to it. That's because this is the way you correctly put the shava. It's called a shava half vowel, underneath a yod. 
This is a half vowel that goes under a guttural, and this is a guttural letter, the aleph in Hebrew. So it actually is consistent. We have half vowel, then we have o vowel, and then we have long a vowel right here. So yeah, ho ba would be your result. And this is what has the, the guy had the guy on Twitter, you know, excited, like, oh, I found, look at this, I found the divine name with these vowels in it and all these manuscripts, and that proves that the divine name is Yehovah and not Yahweh. No, it doesn't. Again, they would do this, the scribes did this, adding the vocalization, not to teach you how to say it. They didn't want the divine name pronounced at all. They didn't want it pronounced. They would do this not to teach a pronunciation, but they would do it to signal to the reader that when you hit the divine name, you say Adonai, because that's where the vowels came from. Again, they put the vowels in to prevent people, to alert people to not say the divine name, not to teach people to say that the divine name is Yehovah. Okay, that's the first problem. Now, we know this is the case from the Hebrew Bible for another reason. The first syllable of the divine name is not Yeh, as in Yehovah. How do we know that? We know that from passages like Exodus 15. Exodus 15, too. You notice I have Lord selected here. Again, the, in English Bibles, the convention to convey the presence of the divine name is to put things in all small caps. There we have it, Lord and if we go down here to the information column, we will see that the divine name here is not YHWH. It's just two consonants, the Yod and the He. And the He has a dot in it to signify that that is a full consonant. He can also uh, serve as part of a vowel. Okay? The scribes would do that. They'd put the dot in there to make sure that you knew it was a consonant. So this very clearly is a long A vowel. It is the same vowel, we go back here, as we have at the end of Adonai, right here. It gets put into the four consonants. It is A, A vowel, A. Okay, if we want to look at it in the Hebrew Bible, Exodus 15, 2, right there it is, Yah. That is the first syllable of the divine name, Yah. We know it absolutely, categorically, because the short form of the divine name, Yah, the two consonant short form, has an A vowel consistently in the Hebrew Bible. It doesn't have Ye, it's not Ye, like short for Yehovah, it's Yah. Now if you want to know about the second syllable, why it's Ve, or at least that's the best guess, Yahveh, Yahweh. You can go to my website and put in the divine name and you'll, you'll get a, a full discussion of what, how we know about the second syllable, or at least the best guess. But what we do know for sure is that the divine name was not Yehovah. Again, the short form tells us otherwise, and the whole reason for using the vocalization here uh, is otherwise. One last point. This is not you know, as common as the full spelling. Let's just search for all of the short forms, Yah, right here in the Hebrew Bible. And over here we get 26 times. So 26 times in the Hebrew Bible, the, you know, for whatever reason, the text has the short form. It is always Yah. It is never Yeh. I don't know why this is terribly important, but when I saw it on Twitter, it's like, oh, come on. You know, you're, you're not proving anything here. Why... You know, why the concern or why the glee, why the jubilation uh, to, to you, you think that you're coming across something that says the divine name isn't Yahweh, but it's Yehovah. But why do we care about this stuff? I mean, honestly, if you're really interested, if this person was really interested in protecting the divine name, you shouldn't be saying Yehovah either. You know, don't say Yahweh. Don't say Yehovah. Say Adonai or Hashem. That was why the scribes did what they did. Otherwise, if you're just trying to win like an internet argument or something, well, that's just a little silly.